Okay. So uh, in today's lecture, today's lecture week number one, lecture number three, we will be talking about the acceleration. It's a new quantity that we are introducing in our course. Acceleration, as you will see, is basically uh, can be an either an average acceleration in case the acceleration is changing or, or an instantaneous acceleration right at the point of interest. And then we have uh, a special case of the acceleration where the acceleration is constant. We're going to come to this and introduce the kinematic equations that we'll be dealing in this course. So the reference for uh, the material in this lecture is from section 2.3 and 2.4. Feel free to read through section 2.4 and 2.5 in preparation for the coming lecture. So let's discuss this concept and an example here. So far, we have seen uh, a uniform and non-uniform motions. So for the following graph of displacement versus time, so this is displacement versus time. What is the corresponding velocity versus time graph? We need to draw the uh, velocity versus time knowing that this function, so let me number those, number one, segment number two, three, four, and five. We have three uh, answers. One of them is being correct. So let's go back first to this graph and talk about it a bit more and see what are the differences and refresh our memories with the material that we already covered when it comes to uniform and non-uniform motion. So if you recall, in uniform motion, we said that uh, motion is being linear versus time. The displacement is being linear versus time. And in this case, the slope, as you can see, is constant at any point on this function. So this linear function has a constant slope. What does a constant slope for displacement? We, we're we're going to talk about that. It is velocity. Yes, it is velocity. So what I can understand from this graph for segment number one, that I have a velocity that is being constant. And what is the slope of this? What is the sign of the slope? Is it positive or negative? It's positive. That's correct. Right. So segment number one, I have a uniform motion with a positive slope, and this, this velocity is constant. What about segment number two? I'm sure you have seen a quadratic function before, a parabolic function that is basically to the order of two, right? So when you have a parabolic function, that's a quadratic, and then you take the derivative for, for this function, what do you get? You get a straight line. So having said that, this means that my velocity here is behaving in a straight line. Between what? Between the maximum velocity that is right here, which is the constant velocity, and between the third segment. Looking at this velocity here, if I take the slope right at this point, which is the same as the, the one that has left, and then I can notice by drawing the, the tangent line here, that this slope is decreasing, right? It is positive, but it is decreasing. So what does this mean? The velocity is being decreasing till it reaches the velocity in segment number three. So what is the velocity in segment, in segment number three? Again, it is the slope of this function. Zero. 
is zero. Okay, so now let's go back to the solutions and take them one by one. So in segment number one, we said that we have a positive constant velocity, which means, which means A is right? Because in segment number one here, I can see that the uh, velocity is constant. However, it is negative, negative slope. But my velocity was positive slope. So A is wrong. This leaves B and C, okay? Now, you tell me, which one do you think is the correct answer. Now I, I explained to you the concept and let's see if you are able to find the correct answer. Wow, yeah. I can see lots of C's and so far one B, two B, lots of C's, which is, you know, very good because Let's see together what is the answer. That's, that's very good. So we're going from positive constant velocity into zero, right? Positive constant velocity into zero. So both of them are so far agreeing with what I have found. Now, let's look at segment number four. Can somebody explain to me what is happening in segment number four in this quadratic function? Negative slope, that's correct. And what about segment number five? Segment Okay, so it is magnitude wise, it's increasing. But because it's a minus, I understand what you mean by here decreasing. So here the slope is starting from zero and then it is increasing in the opposite direction. That's why, why this is why I said magnitude wise it is increasing it is increasing in the negative direction which means it is decreasing if you are comparing it with the opposite to the increase so segment number five is a constant negative slope right which means that the velocity is constant and negative which basically means this. And what's happening here is it is increasing in the opposite direction, or we can call it decreasing because it's becoming more negative. So this is wrong. And the answer to this question is yes, indeed, C. Okay, that's good. That's very good. You, I think you managed to answer this question in a very high successful rate. Now, let's talk about the acceleration. Acceleration and non-uniform motion, basically it's the object velocities changes with respect to time. The object's velocity it changes with respect to time, which means that the acceleration, which is this rate of a change of the velocity, is not zero. Right? Just a second. So we said that the acceleration is the rate of a change of velocity. And since this velocity is a vector, then this rate of change of the velocity is also a vector. 
this rate of a change of the velocity, which I'm calling acceleration, can, as we will see later on, being either varying or constant. If it's varying, then we need to calculate the average of this acceleration. So in order to calculate the average of the acceleration, as we did before for the velocity, when we calculated the average of the velocity, we take two points from the graphs within the, the time range that we're interested to calculate the acceleration, the average acceleration, and then it would be the slope of that line between those two points, as we have seen in last lecture. And what's the unit of the acceleration? The unit of the acceleration is the velocity divided by the time, which is meter per second squared. So this is how we calculate the average acceleration. And we will see an example about that. So again, calculating the average of the acceleration is basically within the specific time. It, we draw the line between those two points that belong to the curve then the average of the acceleration is the slope of that line. Now, if I want to calculate the instantaneous acceleration, which is exactly the same procedure I did in last lecture for the velocity, at one specific moment, then it will be drawing the tangent line at that moment and calculating the slope for that tangent line. So that's the difference. For the average, it is between the two points of the curve, the line between those two points of the curve that corresponds to the specific time of range, range of time. And the instantaneous is the, the slope of the tangent line at the point of interest. So let's look at this example. In this example, we have the following plot of velocity versus time we need to determine the magnitude of the average acceleration between two and 16. So here we're talking about the magnitude. We're not interested in the direction. We only want to calculate the magnitude of this average acceleration because we know the average acceleration is a vector. So for that vector, we're only interested in the magnitude. So how do we do it? Number one, we define the points of the, of the time that we want to calculate the average acceleration for. And then we draw the line that intercepts with the, with the curve. So that's the first point. This is the second point. And then we need to calculate the slope for that line, which is, if you think about it, it is projecting this line on the velocity axis. So this one, I can call it delta x and this one is delta t then i can say the acceleration average is v2 minus v1 over t2 minus t1 which is this one is 43 and this one is around, around three divided by 16 minus two. Then the ac average acceleration is 2.5. Two point eight 
meter per second squared. So this is how we calculate the average acceleration for that velocity versus time. Now the second part is, what is the magnitude of the instantaneous acceleration at 13.5? So let's define what is, where is 13.5? So this is 13, this is 13.5. If I draw the line, I can see that 13.5 is right here. If I draw the, the tangent line right at this point, I will be getting a horizontal line. Now, can somebody tell me what is the slope for this horizontal line? Take that's, any, okay. that's zero. Take any two points. If I take this point and I take this point, if you project them on the velocity axis, it will be, so here, A instantaneous as 50 minus 50, right? Both of them, they have 50. So 50 minus 50, whatever the time is, that's gonna be zero. Eighteen minus ten. The instantaneous acceleration is zero. Any questions so far about how did we calculate the uh, average acceleration and the instantaneous acceleration for this problem that has non-uniform acceleration? I just picked. I just picked two points. Any two points of the line are going to give you the, the slope, right? Any two points of the line are going to give you the slope for that tangent line. So um, <clears throat> what is the equation for uh, average, uh, the instantaneous acceleration? Is it just the same as the average acceleration? It is the same. The okay. Here, the purpose is calculating the slope. So look, let's look at it this way. It is the slope of that line. In the instantaneous, it is the tangent line. In the average, it is the line between the both points. So Sorry, is so is average acceleration between two points and then instantaneous acceleration is just one? The average acceleration is the, the, the slope of the line between the two points of the curve, right? So that, it, the average is when you're using two points and instantaneous would be for what? Both, po both points belong to the curve in the average acceleration. In the instantaneous acceleration, I am interested in finding the acceleration oh. only for one single point on the graph. That's why I... I draw the tangent line, and then I find the slope for this tangent line. This one would be the instantaneous acceleration. So at the end, this is the average acceleration, the line between the both points of the, of the curve, and the instantaneous acceleration is the, the slope of the line that is tangential at the point of interest. So the, um, so the tangent line slope is zero? Right now, because it's horizontal, yes, the slope is zero. So would you ever be asked to find the instantaneous acceleration of two different points, like together or no? You, sh you would be asked to find the instantaneous acceleration, for example, right at this point or right at this point. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions before we move on? Um, just like looking at the graph, like say we had this question on a quiz or a test or something, um, just because it's not like completely defined like points, like you like eyeballed it and said it was 43, say it was like 42 and we got like a slightly different answer, would we still be correct if yes. it was like in the same ballpark? Yes, 
Yes. Okay. We, we, we would be applying a tolerance such that this tolerance is within the uncertainty of the, of the conditions that you are drawing within. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so let's move on. Sorry, sir, I have one more yeah. question. Sure. Um, the 10 and 18 you got for the denominator in the second question, um, where did you get those points? Are they just random points? Random points. Any two points, any two points for the line can be used to calculate the slope. I could have okay. taken 18, I could have taken 16, doesn't matter. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. As long as it's a straight line, then any random points of that line would give you the slope. Okay, so in summary, we have seen so far from last lecture that the velocity versus time curve can be used to calculate the displacement by doing the integration. Remember the area we calculated, that was really the integration within the time limit. And today we have seen that the slope of this graph gives me the acceleration, either by calculating the average acceleration for two points, or by instantaneous acceleration. However, the displacement, only the slope gave me the, the velocity so far. So this is what we have seen so far. So let's move now to uh, solving a few examples. In this example, if we, have a, if we have a person walking with a velocity of two meter per second east. So if this is the east direction, which is my positive direction. When I, when I put an arrow like this, this means my, this is my positive direction, my reference of being positive. If I have a person walking with a velocity of two meter per second, right? And then after five seconds, this person changed his velocity and changed and he went in this direction, west, three meter per second, west. So this was east and this was west. And the distance here, delta t is five seconds. What is the person's average acceleration during this? five second time interval. Let's put the equation here. The acceleration, acceleration average is V2 minus V1 divided by delta T, which is T2 minus T1, the difference in time. Keep in mind that here we have a positive reference and we're dealing with, with vectors, V1 and V2. So whenever we substitute V1 and V2, we have to be very careful to the direction. So A average is V2. So what do you think I should be writing V2 here? The negative sign. Negative sign. Negative sign. That's correct because V2 is going west and my positive reference is east. Minus a three, minus, what about V1? Positive. Positive, divided by, by five. So A average should be minus one meter per second east. So this is the answer to my problem. Why did you um, not do T2 minus T1 for the delta T in the bottom? Why didn't I do what? The, <clears throat> so the equation is T2 minus T1 on the bottom. I'm just wondering why you didn't do that for this. T2 
T2 minus T1 is the time difference between the second moment and the first moment, which is the five second. Okay. The question um, here is saying that after five seconds, which means that he was at V1 and he was walking for five seconds and then he switched, right? So T2 minus T1, the difference is five seconds. So do you see an answer to this in one of the available answers in this multiple choice? C. C, that's correct. Because if, if it's negative in the east, then it is positive in the, in the west. So the answer to this problem is C. I could have taken the west as my reference, and that should be okay. Either way should give you the correct answer. Can I ask you a question? Sure, go ahead. Um, for your like final answer, how did you like just like determine to use east? Because I picked east at the beginning. And when I substituted the V2 and V1 in my equation, I was using this as my positive reference. Okay. That's why I put V2 as negative, because as you can see here, the direction of V2 is opposite than the direction of my positive reference. Okay, thank you. Make sense? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, I have a, sorry, I have a quick question. Yes, go ahead. Um, so, you know how it's over five, the velocity over the, the time? So wouldn't it be negative one over five? Negative like for one the over answer? Five. Why? V2 is negative. Minus a three, minus two. So and the then answer. below that, it says over five. Yeah, so minus five divided by five. Oh, wait, I wrote down negative three plus two. That's Why plus two? Because um, isn't two going in the positive direction? B1, B1 is going in the positive direction. So if V2 minus V1, right? V2 minus V1. What is V2? Is V2 is negative three meters per second. What is V1? Positive two. Minus a three, minus two. Oh, okay. I see what I did wrong. Okay. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So let's move on. Can I ask one more question? Sorry. Yes, go ahead. Um, in our final answer, we put meter per second instead of meter per second squared. Sorry, sorry. This should be squared, yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you. So uh, let's move on then. So that problem basically was for an acceleration that is varying with time. So the acceleration was not constant. But what happened if the acceleration was constant, which is our special case that we'll be using in this course. If the acceleration is constant, then you will see that the average will be the same as the instantaneous, right? And in this case, in this case, if the average is the same as the instantaneous, I can then derive my first kinematic equation for my constant acceleration by taking this T1 to be zero, my starting, my starting time. And this one now is T, which is the, the time at the end, at the destination. And then I can replace V1 with V0, which is my initial, right at T equals zero. I'm going to call this one V0. And then I will call this V2 as V. And this is only, I use it when the acceleration is constant. And then rearranging this equation, I can get now my linear velocity due to a constant acceleration. So this is the equation, the, the first equation in the 
kinematics equations for one dimensional problem when I have a constant acceleration. If I have a motion, this motion due to a constant acceleration, the velocity at the final destination is the equals to the velocity at the initial plus acceleration times the time difference between the initial and the final. So this is my first kinematic equations. And now I can introduce the remaining equations for my one dimensional kinematics for constant acceleration equations. Now, if you would like to know the, I will see the full derivation of these equations, then the full derivations are in those pages 38 to 40 for those who are interested to see how did we get the full derivation of those equations. However, those are the equation that we'll be using for one dimensional. And you can see that we replace the Ds with the X because in the X axis, for example, and using our, co our coordinates later on, we can treat one dimensional either on, on the X or on the Y. So you can replace the Ds with the Xs. And as you can see here, we have X, the final destination of the displacement. X naught is the initial. And V is the final velocity. V naught is the initial velocity and A is the acceleration. So those are the four kinematics, one dimensional equations that we will be using. And those are restricted only to constant acceleration, either zero or constant. Zero is one of the cases. Okay, so this is what you need to be careful with. We don't use those equations and variable acceleration, acceleration that is very good time. So let's look at this example. In this example, we have the following. We have the Batmobile traveling at 65 kilometer per hour on, an, on the entrance ramp to the QEW. This mobile, this car accelerates uniformly to 145 kilometer per hour in 52 seconds. How far in kilometers did the Batmobile travel in that time? So what do we have here? We have the car at the initial velocity of 65 kilometer per hour that accelerates till it reaches a velocity, V final at 145 kilometer per hour. The time it took was 52 seconds. So here is X naught, here is x and the distance here is delta x and the time is 52 seconds which means t2 minus t1 is 52 seconds i need to calculate the delta x i need x minus x naught need to be calculated. So let's see what we have here in this problem. We have the initial velocity. We have the final velocity. We have the time and we need x minus x naught. So back to those equations. What 
which of those equations do you think can be helpful to calculate the x minus x nine? Is it one, two, three, or four? Two, we have the time, we have the velocities, we need x minus x naught. So back to here, x equals to x naught plus half v naught plus v t. But before we do this, we need to do the conversion because the unit for the velocity in our equation are the meters per second. So we need to convert kilometer per hour to meter per second. So how do we do this? Kilometer to meter, you multiply by a thousand. Hour to seconds, you multiply by 60 times 60, hours to minutes, 60, minutes to second, 60. So 60 times 60 is 3,600. So now if you go kilometer per hour, then you multiply by a thousand and you divide by 3,600. This would give you the meter per second, which means V naught is 65 times 1,000 divided by 3,600. V naught is 18. Eighteen point zero five meter per second. Same thing for V one forty five times thousand divided by thirty six hundred. V is forty point two eight meter per second and then now x minus x naught is half 18.05 plus 40.28 times 52 then delta x here is as 15, one, six meter or delta X as 1.52 kilometer. So this is the, the solution for the first example in kilometer. Okay, so let's look at the second example. Sorry, could you go back just for a second? I just didn't get a chance to copy down that last part. I will upload this one to, I will upload the notes to the course link. You don't need to worry about that. Okay. Can I ask a question? Yes, go ahead. Um, are we going to be given these equations in the exam? Yes. I'm not expecting you to memorize those equations. Those equations are going to be given to you in the formula sheet. So I don't need to worry about that. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Now let's look at this example. If you are a forensic scientist investigating a traffic accident, from the skid mark, you see that the driver took 47 meter. So this is delta X to stop the car. The word is stop the car means that the final velocity became zero, right? So it's coming with a, with an initial velocity and then the final velocity became zero. 
You know that uh, acceleration magnitude was five meter per second squared when slamming on the brakes. If the speed limit is 50 kilometer per hour, was the driver speeding at the time of the accident or not? So how do we do this? So we have the driver, the car, initial velocity, we don't know. The final velocity we know is zero. Delta X is 47 meter. And we know the acceleration is five meter per second squared, right? Now we need to agree upon, so this is the velocity, the initial, and right here, just to show you the acceleration. If I'm coming with a positive velocity and then this velocity became zero, in a, unif in a motion that is accelerating uniformly. So what are you expecting the acceleration to be pointing in which direction? Let's take this as my positive direction. Are you expecting the acceleration to be pointing to the right or to the left? To the left which means it's negative because it is decelerating the, the curve. Okay, so uh, what do I have here? I have delta x. I have the final velocity. I have the acceleration. I need v naught. Which equation do you think should be the equation to use? Four. Number four, which is V squared minus V naught squared equals to two A X minus D squared equals to V naught squared plus two X minus X naught and then to A, okay? So let's substitute here. Final velocity is zero. Initial velocity, I don't know. Two, acceleration will be substituted as and delta X as 40, seven, so V naught squared is two times five times 47, and then V naught is is 21.6, eight meter per second. Now, if you want to convert this to kilometer per hour, then you multiply by 3,600 divided by 1,000, then we see that V naught is 78 kilometer per hour, and yes, the driver exceeded the speed limit. Okay, we have here three multiple choice questions. We're gonna go through them and ask you here after our third lecture, which one of the following is not necessarily consistent with a car that is accelerating? One of those four. A car is moving with an increasing speed, a car is moving with a decreasing speed, not necessarily accelerating. 
A car is moving with a high speed. A car is changing direction. Which one do you think is not necessarily? C. Yeah, I agree. A car moving in the high with a high speed not necessarily means that it is accelerating, right? It could have been on that high speed with a zero zero acceleration, not necessarily accelerating. Okay, that's good. So to see. Now let me ask you this question. If an object is moving eastward, this is east, and I have an object moving eastward. And this object is a slowing. In the same direction. Then the, the, then the direction of its velocity vector is eastward, west, neither, not enough information. Same direction, right? Same direction. He's still going in this velocity. Look, look at the direction. He's still going in the direction of the initial velocity. So the answer here is, is A. Fine. Now, the same question, however, this time, the acceleration. The acceleration. He's going, and then he's slowing. What do you think the direction of the acceleration should be? Okay. In order for this car to come to a stop, you have to accelerate in the opposite direction, right? So the acceleration would be in the opposite direction, which means that the acceleration is wasteful. This concludes our lecture for today.